Hi, I'm Nate, and you're watching Photo Learningism. If you watched last week, we touched on Digicam Control, which is a fantastic open source tool for turning your computer into one large remote control for your Nikon or your Canon or your Sony and many other cameras as well. We're going to continue on with that, but this time we're going to take it from the angle of working with stop motion. Stay right there. Okay, so once again, my name is Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in for another exciting video. Wanted to continue on with Digicam Control and look at what that can do for you. We did do a video last week touching on some of the more interesting, larger picture areas of it. So go check that out if you haven't done that already for some background. And if this is your first time to the channel, Thank you so much for joining in for this video. I do a lot of work here to build a community of learning, surfacing the cheap or free art technologies so you can know about them and improve the quality of exploring art. So thank you so much for joining in. Let's get to this. So the first thing I recommend doing, especially if you're going to work on stop motion in this case, this is good best practice for starting a brand new session anyway of pictures, would be within Digicam. First of all, make sure your camera's on and make sure that when you get to this loading screen point, stop there, adjust your camera. I like to shoot in manual just because it gives me a lot of control, but you have to do that on the camera first. Otherwise you have to figure out how to modify it in the interface. And I find it's a little easier just because I'm very familiar with my camera, my Nikon, to make the settings right here on the camera at this stage, get it set so that the exposure and the f-stop and all that is exactly where I want it, and then pick it up from there. So do that first. Next thing you'd want to do is create a new session, like I mentioned. So that's under session, add new session. We're going to give this a name for stop motion project one. I'm going to keep this in the pictures folder for Windows. That's where they like to dump things and that works for me. If you wanted to, you could precursor the images you're about to take with another thing other than DSC. That's the typical format for Nikon. Um, and you can reset this this format with the counter if you like, but I'm, I'm good with that. That's going to work for what we're going to do today. So just be aware that those are options for you. Also, it's off the camera, but there is a choice in the lower left hand corner, if you get a chance to look at it, that helps you decide where you're going to save images, whether you want to save them just to your PC or the camera or both. I'm saving just to the PC because, again, this is stop motion. I don't really feel compelled to store all these images on my camera. Um, I'm just going to store them straight to computer. It works great. So know about that. Know it exists. Brand new session. That wiped out what was there before. That's that's fine. I'm going to click on the LV up here. That clicks us into live view. And the camera clicks on. Now, this question came up, so I'll just touch on that. If you're trying to make sure you are focused in the right area of your shot, you do have the focus square, which is you can flip on and off with the options here. Um, autofocus will most of the time get it pretty close if there's good lighting you may have to tweak it a little bit if not what you could do to make sure it's good is use the mouse roller and i'm rolling forward in the image to get really close to what i want this is moving inside of the focus square just in case that was uh, a question uh, but i'm going to get really close i'm going to first hit autofocus to try to grab a little bit more what i want and then along the bottom here it's almost off the screen but it's there, it's called the focus bar. This is what helps you to really pull or adjust the focus closer to where it should be because it's it may not grab the object that you want. And this is kind of like your pseudo manual focus. So I'm gonna step this through until I start to see more of the finer details. You can kind of see some of the brushed nickel now in much higher detail than it was before. Oop, that was too much. Roll it back. There we go, Just small adjustments. That's pretty good for what I want to do right now. All right, so I'm going to roll back out so I can see everything, and I'm happy with that. So the capture button is up here, but before I do that, I want to highlight kind of the magic of how you do stop motion in this, and that's an overlay. So I want to activate it. I want to use the last captured image, of which right now there is nothing. And the last step you have to do, and I'm realizing you can't see this because it's behind my image, so let me drag that out. <laughs> is uh, here. So overlay, activate, use last captured, and then set the transparency down to maybe about 40-ish percent. That's about where you want it, okay? 
And then from here, you're really good to start. I'm gonna take my first image. The camera just clicked, snapped an image. And what's cool here is you'll see it update on the screen. You may have noticed a mild ghosting effect before it's gone now because it's using the last image. I'm gonna make an adjustment to the live view and look at that. There's a little ghost, a little overlay of what I did before and that is how I can gauge how much I'm moving something. That's pretty awesome. In other stop motion tools, that was called onion skinning and here it's called overlay. But that is how you can drive what you're doing. And it updates as I take pictures. You can see that moving along. So I'm just going to step this forward a little bit each time using just small increments looking back on the image that I took. Very, very minor, minor delay as it works on it. And again, my computer is not brand new, by the way. This is already bridging on five or six years old, and this is keeping up pace just fine with the software and this USB 2.0 connection, okay? This is not new technology, and this is still pretty amazing. So, just so you can know <laughs> what we're working with. I'm gonna do one more. All right, one last shot. Okay. And let's just say that I have achieved the degree of motion that I'm looking to do. Obviously, that's not a very long scene one by one, but it's good enough for the demonstration purposes. So I'm going to close this window because this is live view. That's going to disengage live view, break off from the camera for the moment. And then I'm going to go over to plugins, tools, and create video. And this is really cool because this is a simple way that you can just export straight out of the tool. You don't have to bring the image in somewhere else. It's all done right here. It's pretty awesome. It'll default to 4K. That's a little higher than I'm looking for right now. So I'm going to drop that down just one step to HD. I'm going to let this drop into uh, videos. That's the default spot for Windows anyway of, what, of where it will go. The rest of this looks fine. And I'm going to click on Start. So this is really neat, again, because it is working in raw image formats. That's what I set the camera to take, and this respects that choice. You could change that to something else, but shooting in raw, shooting in NEF, you'll see the progress window update. So this is really cool. It's going to build an HD video straight from the raw images. No conversion necessary. It's awesome. Awesome. Really great innovation that went into this tool, this Digicam control tool. So this will take just a few-ish moments. <laughs> I was gonna say minutes, but even that's not accurate. It ratchets through one image at a time and because of the really high quality image of the raw and all the detail, it does take a little bit of time to process it frame by frame. So be aware of that if this is a larger project. Um, of course, as I mentioned, this is not the newest computer as well. So I imagine newer technology would be able to process that faster. So this is done. I am going to close this and let's bring up videos here and let's see what we've got here it is right there stop motion project one just load that up and play it and there we go it's a very simple motion but that's very smooth very clean and we've been doing this just a couple of minutes from start to finish from setting up the camera to doing the animation the tool really lends a good degree of innovation towards this aspect of, of art and animation to a degree so that's pretty amazing that just with some clicks and and some very very simple action i can get this done so again the tool is digicam control i will put a link to it in the description below I'm Nate. This is Photo Learningism. Thank you so much for joining in. I hope you learned something new through this and at least learned about this great new tool that you can check out. Do check out the previous video and check out all the other videos. I do a lot of work checking into graphic tools and video tools and screen capture tools. There's all kinds of fun stuff, so go do that. Please do give me some feedback because that's very helpful to me if this touched on some good points. Give me a thumbs up if it was helpful. Subscribe if you'd like to see more. And don't hesitate to leave comments. I love comments and I love questions and I love it when people get involved and want to help each other learn and grow in this community. Thank you so much. I will see you again next video.